If you haven't watched the first part of this lighting video, I highly recommend you do so. This video is focusing purely on the fourth lighting pass that I do, which is the non-diegetic aesthetic character lighting. It's a very long process because you have to focus on each shot individually and tune the lighting so that each shot looks correct. And that is why I have split this off to a separate video. This is very much a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to light this particular scene and its four shots. It is not necessary for understanding the high level of the pass, and so that is why it is a second video. So now the last lighting to be done is the specific character highlights or aesthetic lights, as I like to refer to them. You can also consider them non-diegetic lights because they are lights that have no real origin in the world, but you just use to make your individual shots look nice. So with this wide shot, everything's looking fine. We're not going to add any highlights here. So we're going to copy all these lights and we're going to move to our first close up and paste. And we can see right here, we definitely need to adjust some of our light. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn down the kitchen light. So we're going to remap the intensity. Just remove zeros and we're just going to bring that down a little bit. So that our lights on this wall are a bit less intense. That looks much better. And now I'm going to add a fill light on Joyce's face right here because the sunlight's coming from this window and I want to highlight that. And I'm going to add a rim light behind her so that she points out a little bit. So we're going to add a new light. We're going to turn off all of the other lights. So I'm just going to reverse this around. Turn off all of those lights. Now we have just this light. I'm going to add the rim light first. And so we're going to add the rim light back here. Aim it towards Joyce. We're going to widen the FOV. Just this. Yeah, I'm going to say that's looking pretty good right there. I'm going to give it a little bit of radius. See how that settles. That's fine. And then we're going to give this rim light, we're going to give it a blue tone just because the sunlight is going to be orange and I like to have contrasting colors. And we're going to reduce the intensity so it's not quite so bright. Now we turn the lighting back on. Now you can see Joyce has this nice rim light on her face. I'm just going to rename this Rim Light 1. I'm going to add another light. Do the same thing. Turn off all these lights. Bring the new light out, then turn off all the lights. And I'm going to put this roughly where the window is and just aim it towards Joyce. And now I'm going to, uh, I'm going to actually keep the settings, the FOV exactly as it is. I'm going to increase the radius to make it softer. And I'm going to give it a orange hue. We'll see how that settles out. That might actually look okay. Let's take a look. So it's definitely a bit bright and it's hitting that wall and I don't like that. So we're gonna turn off the lights. We're going to come over here. We're going to bring down the far Z until it's no longer hitting that wall. Then we're going to turn our light back on and see what it looks like. There we go. And then I'm going to say that is a decent lighting right here. I might want to reduce this light on the counter. It's pretty intense. So let's just go ahead and see what light that is. That's probably going to be the ceiling fan. It's not. Uh, it could be the sunlight. Yeah, okay. It looks like it's the sunlight. So we're going to turn on the sunlight and we're just going to angle it slightly away from the counter. We're going to bring the intensity down a little bit and we're going to bring up the volumetric intensity to compensate. Putting it away from the counter. See, it kind of it takes a little bit to settle, but once it is finally settled, this is why I set the samples to 128. That's looking pretty good. We'll go with that. So now we'll go back to our base lighting and we'll copy all of this. We'll move to our third shot and we're going to do the same thing. So we can see right here the living room lighting needs to get toned down. 
remap this and drop a zero off to get better control. Bring that down a little bit. And we can see that this light on this uh, painting is really intense. So we're just going to come over here. We're going to bring in the FOV so I can actually see what we're doing. I'm going to rotate the uh, light around, tilt it out towards David, and then max it out again. I'm going to just bring it away a little bit using Z to move it forward. Just to get it off center from that dome a little bit. And that just makes the lighting look a lot better here. I'm going to bring the FOV in a little bit more so I can control it again. And I'm going to aim it this way a little bit. And then we'll max it out. Perfect. So now we've got some unsavory shadows right here on David. So we're just going to add a highlight for that. And we'll throw a rim light behind him. So as before, we're going to create a new light. Drag all of these existing lights in. Pull the new light out. Turn the new light Turn the old lights off so we can focus just on our rim light. Put this right here. We'll max this out. Let's also see where David's silhouette is. Go, we'll go ahead and pull this up a little bit. Perfect. That's a good silhouette for David. And we're going to give this a orange light because it's going to be coming from the window behind and there's sunlight out. Give it a little bit of radius, kick the intensity down. Perfect. Turn on all the lights. That's okay. And then we're going to add another new light, bring it down, turn those off. And then this will be our fill light, which is this going to be basically right behind the camera in this particular case. We're going to give it a high radius to make it very diffuse. We're going to give it low intensity. And we're going to give it a slight yellow hue. And then we'll go ahead and we'll turn on all of our lights. Okay, we need to bring it up. They still got some nasty shadows there. Bring up the intensity. It's looking a lot better. I want a little bit more. There we go. And now we can see that the curtain is getting uh, too illuminated. So we'll select the light. We'll bring down the far Z until it's no longer lighting up that curtain. And then we'll turn the light back on. And that is that shot lit. It's perfect. So finally, we come to the last shot. We'll paste all of our base lights. And we can see that uh, the living room light way too bright against that wall. We've already adjusted that once. So we're just going to go back a shot. We're going to rename these because we forgot to name them. This is room light one. And this is highlight one or a fill light. You can also call that a fill light in this particular case. Let's call it a fill light because that is a bit more accurate. And we're just going to come over here. We're going to select the living room light, go over to the motion editor, copy samples, and then come over here, select the living room light and Paste samples, and then that just gets our our light adjustment transferred over. It is looking absolutely beautiful. I'm actually really liking most of this right now. The only difference I want to make is I want to give Chloe a very strong rim light. It's going to be a blue rim light just because it's a very emotional color, and we're going to try and reduce this lighting right here on this curtain as well. So let's add a new light. Move all of these lights into it. Bring the new light out. Turn it off so I can focus just on the rim light. We're going to give Chloe a very strong rim light here because we're going for a very stylized, emotional lighting here. Want to emphasize her angst. So we're going to give it a very bold blue color. Give it a little bit of radius. Okay, turn on all the lights. A little bit too strong. And I all want to bring in, I want to get it uh, highlighting her nose a little bit more as well. And I think I'm going to also bring it down. So it's shining up onto her a little bit. And then we're just going to bring it this way. And then let's go ahead and just try hand intensity. It's going to probably still end up being a little bit strong. It's not bad though, it's getting a lot closer. Let's go ahead and reduce it a little bit more. Perfect, I love it. 
And let's go ahead and see if we can't reduce that curve. So I, in this shot, I don't actually want any rim, any highlights or fill lights. It's perfectly fine exactly the way it is. So that's going to probably end up being the ceiling, the ceiling fan light. And it is. And so I actually like its intensity overall. So rather than reducing its intensity, I'm just going to reduce the FOV so I can see where it's aiming. And I'm just going to pull it and point it slightly away from the curve. And then bring it back up. Okay, it's a little too far away from the curtain. There we go. Perfect. So that is our lighting. We're going to come over here. We're going to name this light room light one. Put it over there. And so now we have our wide shot, and we can see that the light on that ceiling fan is a little bit too heavy right there. So we're just going to reduce it a little bit. So we're just going to chop a zero off. Bring it down just a touch. Okay, that's not actually doing much. We're going to undo that. Uh, is it the sunlight that's doing that? So where is that coming from? I don't know. Uh, another thing we can do is we're just going to grab the textures, the materials for those papers, and we're just going to darken them. Because if we turn off the lighting, we can see that they're fairly bright right now. If we darken them, then it'll compensate for the lighting. So for this particular scene, because it is all a model, all we need to do is find where it is. It's going to probably be either kitchen one or kitchen two or living room, one of these. There it is. Add an override, show an viewer, materials. So those are going to probably be papers or clutter or something like that. It could be paper stack. So let's come over here and just add a float called color two. Perfect, that makes it dark. And we'll just go ahead and do like 0.7, turn on the lighting and see what that looks like. All right, that's better. Let's reduce a little bit more, 0.5. A little too dark, so difference, 0.6. Perfect. And so that makes that look better for this particular shot. So now we have our wide shot done. We have our close up of Joyce. We have our close up of David. And we have our close-up of Chloe. But that is how I put together lighting for my projects.